So here it says to find the volume of the cylinder in terms of pi. In fact, we're actually going to go ahead and solve it in terms of pi as well as approximate it because some of your homework problems will ask for both. So the very first thing I want to do is write the formula for a cylinder. So the volume for a cylinder is going to be pi r squared because that's the area of a circle. Because a cylinder is a circle with height, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by h for height. So now that I have a formula, what I can go ahead and do is plug in the values that I know. So first things first, it's important to leave pi alone for right now. Why? Because they do want it in terms of pi. So I'm not going to write anything for pi, I'm just going to write down the symbol. Now for radius, I do know the radius, so I do want to plug a value in for that. My radius here is just 3. So we're going to go ahead and plug in a 3, we're going to square it, and then multiply by h. H stands for height, so how tall is the cylinder? Well, it's 8 centimeters, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 8 here. Now that I have that, I'm going to expand this out right here, write everything out to see what I'm left with. So we have pi. 3 squared means I'm going to repeat 3 a total of 2 times, so I'm going to write 3 times 3, and then multiply it by 8. So here we're going to multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 8 is 72, but let's not forget we do have a pi symbol right here that we want to bring down, so we're going to go ahead and write 72 pi, and your answer is going to be in centimeters cubed. Now this is my answer in terms of pi, so when they ask you in terms of pi, this is what they're expecting to see. But in some of your homework problems, it will ask you to approximate. Now, if they ask you to approximate, you can do two things. You can use the pi button, or if they specify to use 3.14, you would plug in 3.14. Now, for some of your homework assignments, it does ask you to approximate by using 3.14 for pi. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and use a calculator. And I'm going to go ahead, I know it's kind of in the way, so let me clear this out real quick. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 32, sorry, 72, and I'm going to multiply by pi. So in this case, your homework's going to ask you to use 3.14, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in and see what my answer is. 3.14, my answer seems to be 226.08. So that would be my approximated answer. So again, you need to be um, sure to read the instructions so that they know what to do. Now, if it doesn't specify to use 3.14 for pi, they might also ask you to use the pi button. So you're just going to go ahead and get rid of 3.14 and instead use the pi button, which is located right here. And this is another, whoops. Forgot to put 72 up in the front. So this would be another answer. You'll notice they're pretty darn close, but they're slightly different. So this is more closer to pi since we use a symbol. But if you use 3.14, it would look like this. Taking a look at number two, the instructions are exactly the same. Find the volume of the cylinder in terms of pi. So for the first thing, I want to write down the formula, which happens to be area of a circle, pi r squared, times the height. Now that I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the values that I know. Pi, we're going to leave it alone for now. Why? Because they do ask for us to leave it in terms of pi. For the radius, let's go ahead and shade the radius. Notice the radius is only from here to here. So the radius is not an 8. The radius is actually a four because it's only half of the diameter. So I'm going to plug in a four and then we're going to square that. Well, what about height? So this one's tricky because the height is not eight. This value was already, this line was already used to figure out the radius. We're not going to use it again. The height is actually two centimeters. Now I know that looks a little strange because this value is eight and this is two, but it does mention it's not drawn to scale. So keep that in mind. So since the height is a 2, I'm going to plug in 2 for h. Now that I have that, I'm going to expand everything out. Pi times 4 times 4. Once again, I'm writing 4 two times because it was being squared. We're going to multiply it by 2, and let's see what we get. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. 
16 times 2 is 32. But let's not forget we have pi at the very end. So we're just going to copy that down here. So that's going to be one of our answers, which is 32 pi centimeters cubed. But now we need to provide another answer. So I'm going to go ahead and use 3.14 for pi because your homework assignment might look like that. So let's go ahead and plug it into our calculator. So here I'm going to go ahead and plug in 32 and we're going to multiply it by 3.14. So notice we're using 3.14 as an estimation for pi. So my second answer would then be 100.48. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in as an answer. Let's not forget to put centimeters cubed. So typically if they ask you for two answers, one is always to keep it in terms of pi and the other one's going to be an approximation. Keep in mind, you might need to have to use the pi button or you might have to use 3.14. It depends on the instructions. Now here, it says to find the volume of the cone in terms of pi. So again, we'll go ahead and do both um, in terms of pi as well as approximating. But first things first, I gotta write down the formula. The formula is almost identical to a cylinder, which is pi r squared times height, but the only thing extra is we're gonna have to divide by three. So with that said, let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So for pi, we're going to go ahead and leave it alone for right now, since they are asking to keep it in terms of pi. I am going to replace radius with a value, because it seems like it's given. The radius here is a 5, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 5. It's going to get squared, and we're going to multiply by the height. How tall is this cone? Well, it seems to me that it's 12 yards. So we're going to multiply by 12 and not forget to divide by 3 because, again, that's part of the formula. So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and write everything out. 5 squared means I'm repeating 5 two times. So 5 times 5 times 12 and let's not forget to divide by 3. Now here's the thing. With the cone, you're going to see because we're dividing by 3, we do have an option to cross cancel. So can we cross cancel here? The answer is yes. 3 and 12 both have a 3 in common, so I'm going to go and divide both by 3. 12 divided by 3 turns into a 4. 3 divided by 3 turns into a 1. So as a final answer, let's see. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 4 is 100. But we can't forget about pi, so my answer in terms of pi would be 100 pi yards cubed. But we're not done. We're going to often be asked to also approximate, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. So let's grab our calculator here. I'm going to go ahead and type in 100. And for pi, I'm just going to go ahead and use 3.14, which happens to be... 314. So another answer I can type in would be 314 yards cubed. But please keep in mind the instructions will vary. Sometimes you will use 3.14 but sometimes you will be asked to use pi. So it just depends on the answer because you will find that they are slightly different. This one was 314, and this was 314.159, and so on and so on. So please read the instructions. Okay, we have another example. It asks us to find the volume of the cone in terms of pi. First things first, let's write down the formula, which happens to be very similar to a cylinder, pi r squared times h. Only thing extra is we're dividing by 3. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So first thing is pi. I'm going to leave it that as is. As for radius, let's see. I'm going to shade in my radius here. Notice my radius is only half of this. So it's not 10. It would be half of it, which ends up being 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write 5. We're going to square that. We're going to multiply it by the height. Now please don't be deceived. My height is not 10. This line was already used for the radius, so we're not going to use it again. The height is actually a 15. Now, if it helps, you might want to redraw the cone 
to look like this so that you can see the height is actually 15. So that is an option. So I'm going to go ahead and write 15 as my height, but let's not forget to divide by 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and expand everything out. I'm going to write 5 two times since it's being squared. And then, of course, we need to remember to divide by 3. Now, at this point, you're going to want to check to see if you can cross-cancel. It won't always happen, but if it, it, if it does, you definitely want to do that. I see 3 and 15 have a 3 in common, so 15 divided by 3 is 5. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So what am I left with? I'm left with 5 times 5, which is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. But let's not forget our pi, so it's going to be 125 pi miles cubed. Now, are we done? The answer is no. We also want to approximate, so how would I do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. I'm going to plug in my 125, and as for pi, sorry, 125, we're going to use 3.14 for pi, which ends up giving us a value of 329 and a half. So that would be my other answer, 329.5 miles cubed. So these are the two types of answers. But once again, it depends. Did they ask you to use 3.14 or did they ask you to use pi? If they asked you to use pi, simply replace 3.14 with your pi symbol, which can be located right here on your calculator. And you're going to see the answers are slightly different, but very similar. So once again, please read the instructions so that you know what to do. Number five, it says find the volume of a sphere with a radius of three units in terms of pi. So first things first, let's write down our formula. We're going to go ahead and write 4 pi r cubed. This is the only one where the radius is cubed instead of squared. And we're going to divide by 3. So with this, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in what I know. We're going to leave 4 alone. We're going to leave pi alone. As for radius, what's my radius? Well, let's shade it in. My radius is just 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 3. We're going to cube it and then divide by 3. Once I have that, I'm going to expand everything out. 4 stays the same, pi stays the same, but 3 cubed. I'm going to write 3 a total of 3 times. So 1, 2, 3, and let's divide by 3. Can I cross cancel? The answer is yes. I can divide both the numerator by 3, so 3 divided by 3 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So what are we left with? We're left with 4 times 3, which is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. So I have 36, but let's not forget our pi symbol. So our answer is 36 pi units cubed. But again, let's go ahead and approximate as well. I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator to type in what I have here clear what we had originally. We have 36 times 3.14, which happens to give us 113.04. So this is one of my answers, and this would be my other answer. Units cubed. So notice, unlike area, area squared, we're going to find that volume, the units are being cubed. And as always, please make sure you read the instructions because they might ask you to use 3.14 for pi or they might actually ask you to use the symbol pi. So it all depends. Your answers will vary slightly depending on the instructions. Okay, last but not least, it says find the volume of a sphere with a diameter of 12 units in terms of pi. So let's first start by writing down the formula. And it's going to be 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. We're just going to plug in what we know. 4 is going to stay the same. Pi, we're going to leave that alone since they want it in terms of pi. For the radius still, let's shade in what the radius is. The radius is only half, so I'm not going to put in 12. It would only be 6. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 6. It's going to be cubed, and I'm going to divide by 3. 
Once I have this, I'm just going to expand everything out, which means I'm going to write 6 a total of 3 times. 1, 2, 3, and let's divide by 3. Can I cross cancel? The answer is yes. Both a 3 and a 6 have a 3 in common. So I'm going to divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Before I move on, I want you to notice when I cross canceled, I only cross canceled with one of the 6s. You cannot cross cancel right here because if you did, you would have changed this 3 into a 1 and you'd have changed this 6 into a 2, which would mean you'd be repeating 2 three times instead of what we see here. So that's the main reason why I was expanding my numbers out so I can see when I do get to cross cancel. So you want to be very careful with, about that. Now we're just going to multiply what we have. We have 4 times 6, which is 24. 24 times 6, um, let's see, I'm not going to do that off the top of my head. I'll probably give you the wrong answer. So I'm just going to use the calculator real quick. We're going to do, let's see, 4 times, we already said 4 times 6 is 24. We're going to multiply that by 6, but then we also need to multiply it by 2. So we're going to get a total of 288. So let's write that down. So here, when we multiplied all values together, we got 288. But as always, don't forget about your pi symbol. So it's going to be 288 pi units cubed. But once again, you might be asked to approximate, so let's practice that as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull the calculator over. Let me erase this so it's out of our way. We're going to type in 288 times 3.14 for pi, and our answer is going to be 904.32. So this would be another answer, but this is an approximation. But as always, you need to be careful and read the instructions because they might ask you to use 3.14 or they might ask you to use the pi symbol. So in that case, your answer would be slightly different than if you use 3.14. So once again, please read the instructions.